Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again with the first of this week's reviews. Um, I'm trying out a new microphone. Hopefully, um, it will improve some of the voice. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, where are we? We are on the island of Jersey in the Channel Islands. This is Jersey Airport, Echo Golf Juliet Juliet. We're looking at the Payware Scenery, a new version from Fry X Simulations. Currently, this is version 1.0.2 for the PC version of Flight Simulator 2020. Download comes in at 917 meg and it installs at 1.63 gig. It's currently available from both Sim Market and any builds, and very little difference in the price really. I'll give you the Sim Market price because it includes tax. 17 euros and 99 cents, which equates to roughly 19 dollars 70 cents US or £15.43 pence UK. As ever, those prices are estimates taken from the Euro and they include tax or VAT at 20%, which may vary depending on which country you're in when you make your purchase. So let's look at the features. So features of this Jersey airport. We have accurate and highly detailed airport buildings, extensive and detailed terminal interior, that would be interesting to look at, high-resolution custom PBR textures, and custom ground markings. So the features list appears short, but um, having looked over this, um, it's actually got a lot more. But uh, anyway, okay, so let's get on with a little bit of history for this airport. So let's uh, give you some history of this airport. And firstly, I apologize for the Japan Airlines 777 down there to the right. Um, I think it's an FSLTL insert. I can't do much about it at the moment. But let's uh, just talk some history. Jersey Airport, Echo Golf Juliet. Juliet is a public use international airport operated by Jersey Airport and loca located in the parish of St. Peter, 4.6 miles or 7.4 kilometers west northwest of the town of St. Helier on Jersey in the Channel Islands. Air service to Jersey before 1937 consisted of biplane aircraft and some seaplanes landing on the beach at St. Albans Bay. Jersey Airways and Imperial Airways were among those who were operated to the island before the Second World War, but conditions were difficult as the tides governed the timetables. It was also difficult to prevent public members from walking across the landing area, and any aircraft that had mechanical problems had to be dragged up the slipways until the tide receded. The states of Jersey decided to build an airport which opened in March 1937 with four grass runways, the longest being 2,940 feet or 896 meters with a concrete center line. Concrete taxiways were added during the occupation by the Luftwaffe in the Second World War and they also built hangars, one of which, the Jersey Airlines hangar, is still in existence although no longer used. A tarmac runway was opened in 1952 and the grass strips were closed. A feature of the airport in the 1950s was the traffic control system. Traffic lights were in place to prevent vehicles using the road from Le Quinez to the airport when the planes were being moved to or from the hangar used by BEA. The runway was lengthened several times over the years and was redesignated 0826 in October 2014 due to the shift in the Earth's magnetic poles. In March 2012, led by Group Chief Executive, the successful completion of an integration program with Jersey Harbors saw the creation of Ports of Jersey. The states of Jersey passed a business case in early 2015 and the companies were joined on the 1st of October that year. There were approximately 47,000 aircraft movements and over 1.6 million passengers at the airport during 2016. The 1937 terminal was designed with a control tower between the arrivals and departures area. The terminal was extended in 1976 and a new departures terminal adjoining the existing terminal was opened in 1997. A new control tower was completed and opened in late 2010 and all major airport operations have been transferred to these new buildings. Jersey is part of the common travel area, which means that there are limited identity card checks before boarding a flight to the UK or the Republic of Ireland. 
There would be, of course, full passport checks when travelling to or from other countries, however. Some nine airlines serve the island, including Aer Lingus, British Airways, EasyJet, Lufthansa and Eurowings. So there you go, some history for you. The airport's been around a while, certainly during the war, and has received some extensive updates. So now let's look at runways. Okay, so runways. So I've lowered the lighting. It's uh, nearly sunset. In fact, it's 9.30 local time in the evening. Um, we're in August 2024, and we're looking down the throat of runway 08 here. So, Jersey Airport operates a single runway 0826 measuring 5,597 feet or 1,706 meters and is constructed from asphalt and is fully grooved. The airport lies at an elevation of 277 feet or 85 meters and sits within the GMT UTC time zone. Now, the same as the UK, the UK is one hour ahead of GMT UTC because we're on British summer time. And Jersey also observing daylight saving time. The airport is also currently one hour ahead of GMT and on the same time as the UK. So runway 08, and we're looking down the throat of it now, features high intensity runway lighting, high intensity airfield lighting system, centerline lighting, runway end identifier lighting system, and precision approach path indicators on both sides. Now looking at the runway, it's got everything right except it's missing the right hand pappies. According to the chart I'm looking at, it has pappies on both sides for this end. However, everything is correct apart from that. You've got the um, approach halter here. Here you can see the runway end identifier lights flashing away. Center line lighting, the high intensity lighting system is pretty good. We're just missing the right hand pappy, um, which is probably something they correct in a small update. Approaches available here where well, you have an NDB instrument landing system, standard. You also have an RMP approach option, a VOR approach option, and an NDB approach option. And further along, you can see just about see here, they have a high speed turn off Fox on taxiway Foxtrot for landings on 08, should you be able to get off there quickly. Um, it's quite a short runway. I've actually flown in here myself in the real world some years ago and um, quite a lot of passengers clap as we leave the end of the runway. But that's another story. Okay, let's go have a look at runway 26. Okay, so here we are looking down the throat of runway 26 at sunset. And you have the same high intensity runway lighting, high intensity airfield lighting. The center line lighting is there. Uh, precision approach path indicators, we have one on the right side, which is correct as per the charts. Um, no runway end identifier lighting system at this end. So they've got this end of the runway absolutely correct, including the lead-in light system, which is all as it should be. So the only thing it's missing really is the pappies on the other side at the other end. Okay, so approach options here, this end, runway 26, you have a VOR instrument landing system, an RNP approach option, a VOR approach option, and an NDB approach option. So there we go, runways all pretty much and nav eight all pretty much as they should be. The only thing that's missing is the second pappy on, but on, the, on the right side of the runway 08. Approach lighting system is also correct at both ends. So they've got this pretty much right. Okay, no jetways at Jersey, so let's get down to the main tour and have a look at this version of the Jersey Airport. Okay, so welcome back. So here we are back in the daytime. It's actually sort of mid-morning, quarter to 10 in the morning. Um, we're looking down the throat of runway 26 here. And um, let's start the tour. We'll do a low level tour um, towards the airport, looking at airside and various options. So one thing that strikes me about this is the scene is really good. Um, you could say that they've not had to add very much because the UK now, certainly the island of Jersey, actually looks pretty good. But what they've done really, really does enhance the airport. I mean, it looks nice. Cars are in a nice position there. All the trees. I mean, it looks pretty real. So 
So here we're coming up on the fire station and as you can see various bits and pieces have been added, various bits of clutter. It looks wonderful, really does. So that I believe is the old Jersey Airlines hangar we mentioned in the history. But as you can see it's all weathered and textured and looks lovely. It's very very nice. Ground markings here on the ramp are excellent as you can see no jetways. And there's my aircraft parked over there. And here's the far southwest corner of the airfield complete with rotating radar there and a few old buses. There's the fence line but as you can see the whole thing looks really nice it fits well. Not too sure what that is. So let's get a close up of this part of the ramp as we come up towards it here. Just it does look nice it's got a certain ambience about it um, that just sort of makes the airport look nice. So we get down a bit lower, as again I apologise for the Japan Airlines jet, but um, let's just have a look at some detail here. I mean this looks nice doesn't it? Beautifully weathered buildings, these as you can see it's all walkways. Um, there is, as far as I know, a GSX profile available on flightim.to for this. So those of you who have GSX are going to enjoy watching your passengers walk off the aircraft and hopefully through the doors. But as you can see, beautiful ramp clutter. And I believe this is the cargo point. But I just like the way it looks. And there over there you've got um, a huge hangar. So let's look at the tower, see if anything's been done to the tower. This is a new control tower that was added. Okay, there looks to be some internal development. Let's pop inside. And there you can see there is some internal development, but unfortunately no people. But that's okay, they've developed it this far, and um, I'm, you know, I'm happy with that. And also the glass is good, because you've got this uh, slightly misty glass, gives the effect looking out there. And there's a view looking out the other direction from the tower, very, very nice. So continuing the tour, there you can see this huge hangar. There's a couple of aircraft in there. There's also room for you to park your aircraft, uh, which is really good. Gamma Aviation over there. And we've got a couple of static aircraft here too. Very nice indeed. And various additional buildings here, land side of the airport fence line. These are port cabins actually. So passing back along the hangar here, let's uh, just have a look at the southern side of the airport here. Various cargo lifters, bits and pieces here. Here's the fuel farm. Very nicely modelled, I have to say. And I believe this is what they call a balancing pond. So just a quick look land side of the fuel farm there. The modelling is lovely. All of the cars I can see wherever I look are in their bays. Nothing has literally been thrown at the ground, which is good. Very nice indeed.
So while we're here, let's look at some runway taxiway signage. Here you can see decent signs um, sitting on a concrete plinth into the ground, very, very nicely done. Actually, the concrete texture looks really good too. Very, very nice. Blue airfield edge lights, just as you need them. Here you've got taxiway delta uh, going into the woods of the runway and you've got the appropriate signage, which is correct as it should be. Windsock there on the other side of the runway too. And finally, here we are looking at the approach to runway 08, threshold there to the right. Again, the appropriate signage all looks pretty good, to be honest. So here we are looking at the north side of the terminal. Again, you can see, I mean, it looks really nicely done here. Very, very nice. The clutter looks good, all positioned in the right places. Can't see any problems there. It just looks good, it really does. It's very nice, including the emblem there. It's perfect. So here's the old hangar. Again, nicely weathered. It looks old, just as it should do. And here's the airport fire station. Very nice. Okay, so a couple of shots land side before we check inside the building. Um, here's this, <laughs> it's a really nice ornate building. I love it, it's very, very nicely done. And you can see here the foliage well, this is all very, very nice. Couple of cars, again, all parked in their slots, nothing sitting all over the place. And a nice close-up of the building there. So just a couple of close-up shots of the main terminal. There you can see the main entrances there, and the landside road looks good. Would have been nice to have a taxi or two. And as usual, as I've said before, the airport's missing people. Real pity. But anyway, let's have a look inside the terminal and see if there are any in there. And indeed there are. You can see through the uh, doorway there. Let's go in and have a look. And as you can see, we get really close and the text is still readable. I'm really that, that impresses me. So here we are inside the main terminal, couple of people figures. And look at that, we can get up really close to that and it's still readable, that, that's very impressive. So here you've got land side, we've got check-in, loads of check-in desks, unfortunately no staff or passengers queuing up that I can see. Let's have a little tour. I mean, the figures are fine. But we could have done with some people queuing up at one of the check-in desks. And um, an airline staff member, possibly. So here's the stand up close where my aircraft is parked. I've got the Phoenix Airbus A320 sitting there. We have GSX loaded, which is why you can see these British Airways tugs. But I just love the way this is all weathered and modelled. I mean, look at it. So one or two people sitting, waiting there in the airside lounge. And here you can see, um, I mean, the, the, the text is really nicely done. Even up close, it's all readable. The glass looks pretty good. Here you can see the texture, which is fairly unusual to see this. This is good quality glass. And of course, the building is wonderfully weathered. 
quick look inside very nicely done and here we are inside and you can see um, the whole corridor goes all the way along there and you've got various people flags are nice so we'll take a little trip down here just have a look at the detail I mean, it's very nice, it really is. You've got this corridor that goes off, you've got lounges on both sides that you can see. And you've got the odd passenger. And I think it looks nice, it really does. And you get this nice view out through the windows, which I think is pretty good too. All of the uh, signage is really clear close up, which is... Um, I mean, that's a tribute to good modelling, actually. Very nice indeed. But as you can see, this is one of the nicest looking ramps <laughs> you've ever seen. It's all fully weathered, decent concrete. Uh, it can be fun to fly in here. It really could. Okay, so that was the daytime tour. As you can see, it all looks really quite impressive. Let's drop it down to dusk and have a look at how the lighting is. Okay, 20 minutes before 10 p.m. Um, as you can see, it's August. It's early August 2024. Uh, lights came on about four minutes ago, um, and as you can see, I mean, it looks great. I, I, I love the way this has been done. The lighting is very subtle. Um, probably more subtle than I've seen in some other um, sceneries. You've got more than adequate lighting at the parking area. Green center line lights as well to help you find your way in. And look, they go all the way in towards the GA hangar. Um, and they're everywhere. You have no problem taxiing around. And uh, just looks very impressive. And there's the far southwest corner of the airport. And a beautiful view out over the sea. Runway 08 threshold there in the distance as the sun sinks down. Quick look at the runway signage. It's all nicely lit there. No glow from it, but that doesn't matter. Green center line lights look good. And you've got the stop bars. Very nice. And again, look at these two signs. Very nice indeed. So here's a close-up look at my aircraft on the stand. As you can see, the lighting is being provided from the correct sources. Those lights above are really quite powerful, um, but they give the right effect. Nothing really over the top, I think. It looks really good. And there you also you can see into the exterior departure lounges, which is another really good thing. So just a close-up view there looking through the windows, I think it looks really impressive. It looks pretty real, to be honest. A quick view of the aircraft park there. And we'll take a quick run down here, just to look at the lighting generally. As you can see, I mean, it looks pretty impressive. Here we are inside this part of the terminal. Yeah, it's great. It's really nice. Quick look at the control tower. There you can see the big hangar down there to the right. The gamma hangar is also fully lit. So it's going to be really useful for you guys who want to park in there. So once again, nothing much that you can see from the outside and pretty much no lighting inside the control tower at all. So they've decided not to develop this as much as the rest of the airport. So here's the view from inside my Airbus. This is what you'll see when you park up on stand nine. And I think it's a lovely view. Well, it really is. And there's a the view out of the captain side, complete with the engineer on the stairwell there. And looking out of the right hand side. It's really impressive. It's this sort of um, development and this sort of realism that makes you want to fly into a place. 
Okay, so we'll have a little tour over the car parks here. As you can see, the cars are pretty widely spaced. Not much repetition, which is good. And everything parked in their slots. And some more things to look at down there. And there's the building, which surprisingly isn't lit as much as I thought it might be. However, some subtle lighting and you can still see it, which looks impressive. Down there you've got the baggage hall. So as you can see, the airside ramp looks pretty impressive. Visually it looks great. I, I like the scenery, it is very, very good. Um, it's a serious contender to rival the UK 2000 version, which also is very good too. So a quick look down here. It's really nice. And there you can see the entrance to the hangar, the doors wide open and the Gamma Aviation sign at the top. So here we are inside the hangar, absolutely wonderful modelling. Loads of space so you can park an aircraft in here. And as you can see we've got one private jet parked in there too. So a couple of high level shots just showing you the ambient area and I mean, it looks beautiful, it's all nicely lit. Car parks are nicely lit there. And you can see the threshold of the runway in the distance and you've got various lights and uh, goings on. There's the airport itself and you've got the sun pretty much gone now and a beautiful glow above the sea in the distance. Okay so that was dusk, let's drop it down to night time now and have a look. Okay, so it's 11pm local time, as you can see the sun is gone, the night is upon us. You have this really nice sort of um, comparison here where you've got the tungsten light glow in the car parks and the uh, LED lighting on the airfield itself. Green centerline lights show up really well at this level, as do the blue airfield edge lights. Okay, loads of Asobo globes over here, but um, actually it looks pretty impressive. There's the other view we looked at a moment ago. It just looks great in the dark, doesn't it? So a very quick tour over the airside ramp at night. It looks good, it really does. There you can see the main terminal all nicely lit up inside. I am surprised about that old building. It looks a little bit better at night time now. See there, the lights come alive a little bit more. There's the fire station, complete with the fire control room there, and you can see even the computers down here. So we pass over land side, there's the terminal extension you can see inside and the lighting's really good. There's the GA hangar. Pity about the control tower, it would have been a nice touch to do that. And again the lighting is very nice in the airside ramp, generally it's all look pretty impressive. And finally a view from the cockpit here, oh, it does look good. It's the sort of view you really want to see that looks real. Captain's view. And the first officer's view. Very nice indeed. Okay, so that was night time. Let's bring the dawn up. Okay, so just after 7am local time, the dawn's coming up behind us. And again, you've got this lovely red glow on the building. On all the buildings, 
Uh, lights went out about oh, four or five minutes ago. It just looks good, it really does. And there's the sun coming up in the east. You've got the gamma hangar below us there and the bay out to the right side. Okay, 9am local time and time to wrap up the review and give you my thoughts. Um, do I like it? Yeah, I like it a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of Gary's work at UK 2000 Scenery and he has a really wonderful rendition of this airport out. So you won't be disappointed with that version. However, FlightX simulations have come up with something pretty special here. Um, the texturing everywhere you look is incredible, from the runways and taxiways to the buildings, everything is done really nice. Every bit of signage with text you go up close and it's not distorted at all. You get a lovely view from the flight deck of the stands when you park up. Um, the scenery, it really blends in very, very well. The nav aids are all complete except for one minor detail. What needs to be done? Okay, really, uh, there are no complaints, but I have two things I'd like to see. Obviously, they need to add the uh, additional PAPI to the approach of runway 08, and that would complete the nav aids um, listed on the runway, make it pretty much perfect. The only other thing I'd like to see is a few more people. You've got the landside road fully modelled in 3D with a terminal. Be nice to see a couple of taxis, maybe a family getting out there ready to go inside the terminal. I mean, that looks really great. It really does. Um, but everything else, you know, it's, it's a good airport. It'd be nice to see the control tower developed as well. Um, obviously, one of the most important buildings on the, on the airport. Um, easy to do for so many other developers. It'd be nice to see this de internal development upgraded a bit, complete with people um, and lighting and, and various bits and pieces. But you know, the airport is great. It looks good, it's beautifully modelled, and it sits very nicely in the terrain here. You've got a lovely airport scenery that's really very ambient. It's just great. There really isn't anything to sort of worry about this. Like I said, it would be just nice to see a few more passengers and develop the ambience of the terminal a bit more. I'm a bit surprised that this whole building here isn't lit as much as it should be, but you know, that's okay too. It is old. And here you've got the old um, hangar as well, which has been beautifully modelled and weathered. All of it looks great. Do I like it? Yeah, I like it a lot. Do I think it's a serious contender? Um, I hesitate to say it's the best. I mean, it's close. It's right up there. Um, it's a really, really good airport. Is it worth 18 euros or 20 dollars? I mean, I mean, given the amount of texturing work that's been done and they've textured everything, and they put all of these cars in their slots. Nothing has been thrown at the ground. I think it's probably just about worth that price. Uh, one of the top priced airports, WF Scenery Studios of Hong Kong, coming in at around 28, 29 euros. Um, when you look at that and you look at this and the, the features that have been done, and this in many ways is at least as good as that one. And yet it's something like eight, nine euros cheaper. So yeah, I think it's just about worth the price. It looks really good, I like it. If you want Jersey and you haven't bought it yet and you're thinking about whether to get this or the UK 2000 one, to be honest, you won't be disappointed with either. Um, this one is a very, very nice airport. I like it a lot, it's been very, very well done. So there we are, Jersey in the Channel Islands, Echo Golf Juliet. Juliet, the payware scenery from Fly X Simulations. This is version 1.0.2, which was released recently. Download is 917 meg, and it installs at 1.63 gig. You can get it from both Sim Market and any build. There's very little difference in the price when you look at the tax. Um, priced um, at Sim Market at 17 euros and 99 cents, which equates to roughly 19 dollars 70 cents US, or 15 pounds 43 pence UK. As ever, those prices are estimates taken from the euro, and they include tax or VAT at 20%, which of course could be different depending on which country you're in when you purchase this product. It's nice, a feature-rich airport. Um, beware of the short runway, it's going to be a challenge for you, but at least you've got the ILS at both ends. But yeah, I like it a lot. Very, very nice. So thanks for watching guys, thanks for joining me. I hope this was useful to you if you have been on the fence about this product. 
Um, yeah, I like it a lot. It's really, really good. So stay tuned for the next review coming this week where we'll be looking at Bournemouth Airport. Now there is a freeware out there that's actually really good. So it'll be interesting to see if this payware stacks up. Um, Velocity Skytech um, are the developers and they brought it out and I've had a brief cursory look over and yeah, uh, you know, it looks all right. Anyway, join me in that review coming up this week and see what you think. So thanks again, this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, wrapping up the first of this week's reviews. Thanks for joining me guys, have a great flying week and fly safe. Bye bye for now.